discussion with the uh, chapter 10 that is transmission lines of uh, your textbook John B. Higgins RF Electronics. Uh, so why do we need the uh, transmission lines in uh, RF uh, systems, uh, broadcast or transmissions? Is that uh, you see at high frequencies you cannot treat uh, the circuit, the conventional circuit in terms of lump circuit elements, okay? So if you draw a circuit diagram with the lump components, that is ideal uh, resistor, capacitor, inductors, transistors, etc., connected by the lines that present zero, zero length wires, well, that's good for, for low frequencies, okay? But the story is very different at high frequencies. You cannot have a, a, a lump component circuit, okay? The, the thing is that at high frequencies, you have to consider the distributed parameter, the distributed um, distributed inductances and capacitances of a of even a short piece of a wire. So you see, uh, all real wires, if uh, not much shorter than the shortest relevant wavelength. So if the wavelength over here becomes relevant to the length of the wire, uh, if the length of the if the length of a piece of wire is is uh, you see, if you have for example a conductor like this, you have a short piece of a conductor. And its physical length, its physical length is uh, is a constant. Let's say a small l. And uh, this, if small l becomes comparable, or if l, if your length piece of the wire length is much less than the wavelength, let's say the wavelength of uh, uh, the op at, at which the circuit is operating, the 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 operation frequency or the wavelength, corresponding wavelength. So you have something like this. Possibly the thing is that the voltage or current, the signal down the down the line is not constant. Okay, so it, it's specially uh, it's uh, uh, it's space related. It, it depends on the space. So, for example, at, at this point, uh, uh, the the current or the voltage signal, whatever it is, uh, the signal that is going down. Uh, traveling down the transmission line is different. Okay, so at any point you cannot uh, treat this if the if the length is much shorter. So if the, the length is much shorter than the shortest wavelength, uh, then the even the wire is a complicated circuit element. Okay, uh, because there are variations uh, in the voltage or the current signals. So if you consider this, uh, then then you have to consider this uh, voltage or current signal, whatever it is as a let's call this a current signal okay you have to consider this if this if this dimension of the length is let's say is along the z axis then this is i of z okay and uh, suppose this is uh, my z equal to 0 okay and then this continues this is let's let's say this is an infinite piece of a length of a wire so you don't have any deflections i mean determination you don't have the short circuit, open circuit, or it is not terminated in an arbitrary load. So the situation is like this. You have this wire, okay, and uh, at the terminals, you, you don't have any arbitrary piece of load, or let's say uh, you don't have any load like this. So because if you are going to have a load over here, let's say GL, uh, inductive, capacitive, or whatever it is, and if it is different with a natural Impedance, which is which you'll see later on, that which is the characteristic impedance. So if Z naught, which is the transmission line's characteristic impedance, is not equal to ZL, then you will have reflections. Okay. So for example, if you have a wave that is traveling like this down the transmission line, and then at the interface, well, there will be a reflection. There will be a reflection back. Okay. Now you can minimize the reflection. You see how you maximize the power transfer. Again, there is an idea of impedance matching. And if you can uh, guess this right, you, and if you apply uh, an impedance matching section over here, okay, you can apply an LC impedance matching. If the wavelength is as such, you can use those lump components. Um, if not, you can use a piece of transmission line over here. Uh, but anyways, if you have, if you're using a, uh, an impedance uh, matching over here and that makes your load equal to Z naught then this reflection is, is gone okay you don't have this reflection so either 
the the length of the line so as the length of the line let's say this is small l is infinite we consider the length as infinite or 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 the um, the, the, the determination is in Z0, okay, or ZL, in the, the load in which the line is terminated is Z0, you don't have any reflections, so that, that implies no reflections, okay, so this implies no reflections, so that means the power transfer is maximum, okay, power transfer is maximum, so no reflections. So you, you you might need to look into how you can design a impedance matching network using a Smith chart. How do you want to add the transmission line stub or uh, series stub? Okay, so so you might want to uh, to avoid the reflection. You might need to design an impedance matching network. Or so the point is that uh, uh, if the length, you see, if uh, if we consider for a for a wire, you see, uh, if a for a wire normal uh, transmission which happens at uh, 50 hertz okay i mean the the power generation which occurs at 50 or 60 hertz uh, you have a very huge wavelength okay so it's not even i mean it's, it's it, it 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 will be a constant it will be a constant it will be a constant like this so you see there's not much variation but as the as the frequency is increasing, you see, if we are, if we are, if we are talking of microwave frequencies, let's say 2.4 gigahertz, okay, at which your maybe uh, the uh, Wi-Fi connection at home is operating, the frequency of Wi-Fi or uh, cellular broadcast, which is in gigahertz, uh, GSM frequencies. And uh, the thing is, the thing is, the frequency as the frequency goes high, the wavelength decreases. So the wavelength, the wavelength is decreasing. So as the wavelength is decreasing you have something like this okay so for the given physical length you are you are um, you are going to consist of many such wavelengths so there is there is phase variation you cannot you cannot treat this line as a zero resistance as in lump circuit elements uh, zero resistance straight piece of a wire no you you need to consider its distributed um, circuit elements uh, and if it is a lossless piece of a transmission line then you have lossless inductances distributed inductances and capacitances so real wires if they are not much shorter than the shortest uh, uh, relevant wavelength they themselves complicated they, they are themselves complicated circuit elements so the current is not the same everywhere along such a wire nor is the voltage uniform so even if the wire has no resistance okay so uh, you see the, the voltage or the signal that is traveling down the line is not constant okay depends on where you are going to measure it okay so for example over this and over here i of let's say whatever this point is let's call this z1 so z1 obviously is not equal to this is not equal to i z2 okay because the current is a function of space right because the line is distributed so the current is also a function of space coordinates so you don't have this uh, the constant current and you you you, you, can, you cannot consider uh, a piece of a wire with a uh, with zero resistance okay it, it, it's, it's it's a circuit in itself so on the other hand when interconnections are made with transmission lines which are well understood uh, circuit elements we can accurately predict the circuit behavior so we will consider the two uh, conductor lines uh, which you might have uh, studied in much detail in your microwave engineering course so if, if you are aware of coaxial cables which have an inner conductor and an outer conductor insulation between them we're going to consider these coax cables as, a, as our transmission lines and then we have the other uh, as a open parallel wire lines uh, the transmission lines uh, so we are going to use them more predominantly in this chapter we have another transmission line as such so for example you can have a micro strip okay uh, so there could be a metal strip and then uh, this metal strip is over a piece of uh, call it uh, um, substrate okay so you have a substrate then there is certain width let's call this width this is the length 
of the of the strip. So this is also a, a transmission line. Okay, uh, but in this chapter you have this box and the open parallel wire lines. So we are going to consider their inductances and capacitances, characteristic impedances, etc. But um, just to mention why we go for high frequencies, you if you wonder why we need high frequencies for transmissions uh, or in radio communications. You see, there are certain advantages. For example, if you are going to consider a certain loop antenna, okay, a small loop antenna which has a which has certain, let's say, physical length, call it, um, call it small L, whatever it is, and if you are going to increase the frequency, the wavelength is going to come down. So, the electrical length, which is N lambda, as you are going to increase the frequency, as you are going to increase the frequency, your electrical length. I mean, the the, uh, the electrical length is going to increase. There will be more wavelengths, more wavelengths contained in the physical length of small l. Okay, so there will be more wavelengths in the uh, which can be contained in the in the physical length l. So this n is going to increase. Okay, this n is going to increase. This results in increased electrical length, which is an integral multiple of the wavelengths. Okay, because the wavelengths are becoming shorter. So that implies that implies large gain of an antenna. So, for example, at uh, GSM frequencies uh, the, the cellular towers are, are using, you need uh, uh, very small uh, antennas that can be fabricated uh, uh, down to millimeter sizes in your cell phones, in your modern cell phones. Okay? So, they, they still have a very high gain because the frequency, uh, frequency is very high. So for a, for a very short wavelength, you can uh, you can have a lot of integrated front end electronics. Okay. So for 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 example, for, for high frequencies, uh, GSM frequencies, you don't you don't need large antennas. You still have a, a very small antenna that can be printed down on a circuit, and uh, it still has a very high gain. Then the other uh, advantages could be line of sight communications, for example. Uh, uh, other than uh, radio communications, you see you still use high frequencies. For example, your microwave oven is operating at frequencies more than 2 gigahertz for heating. And you use this in medical diagnosis like MRI. So high frequencies, they, they are being, uh, the or microwave frequencies, they have uh, applications everywhere besides communication, okay? Um, all right, so now a few parameters of interest that uh, we're going to consider uh, you see, there, there is a parameter called natural or characteristic impedance of a transmission line. Uh, so this parameter of interest that is associated with all the lines, be it a microstrip line or a coax cable, okay, it can be a microstrip, it could be a coax, it could be open parallel wire, two conductor wires. Uh, there's always a, a natural parameter of interest, and that is the characteristic impedance, okay. So uh, this is associated with all the characteristic lines denoted by Z0. So, how real is the characteristic impedance? Well, you see, if you are going to connect a DC ohm meter, okay, to measure the resistance at the end of a 50 ohm cable, will it indicate 50 ohms? So, that's the question. Now, yes, it will indicate if the cable is infinitely long, so there is no reflection from the far end. Uh, it doesn't arrive back at the meter before we finish the measurement. So, we can, yes, we can, we can still measure 50 ohms. But what if... Uh, the line is not infinitely long, or if you have reflections due to arbitrary load uh, terminations, uh, then you have uh, a variable impedance, see? So otherwise, the meter will simply measure whatever is connected to the far end, which could be a short circuit, open circuit, could be a resistance or arbitrary load. So to make a theoretical determination of uh, Z0, let's model the transmission line as a ladder network. So so now you will see what uh, it does means by uh, the distributed elements, as churn capacitor and series inductor. So, so have a look at this piece of a transmission line model. Do you see over here? Uh, you have distributed per unit length quantity. So this delta z is an uh, infinitesimally uh, small length. So if you have the length of the wire, it is small. Okay, so the length is small. We have a very small length. We are considering a small piece of length along the z direction, length is small, okay. So, uh, we are considering the per uh, unit or per meter quantities. So, we have inductance that models the series reactance 
uh, for a lossless piece of uh, transmission line. If you're going to consider this for a uh, uh, for a lossy transmission line, then you might need to add a, a resistor with a with an inductor. You see, uh, if you have a lossy transmission line, well, I will have something like this. There will be a resistance, then an inductor. There will be an inductance, okay. And then uh, for the shunt branch, you don't have only the capacitance, but also the conductance. So you have the resistance over here, and this, uh, well, this piece repeats, the piece of transmission line is repeating, okay. So again, you have resistance, you have inductance, uh, drawing is not so nice, but anyways. So then you have a capacitor, resistance, well, why do why we don't consider the resistance over here is, well, one of the reasons is, uh, you see at very high frequencies, at very high frequencies, uh, the inductive reactance is very large. So this parameter becomes very, the, the inductive reactance, J omega, becomes very large. Uh, so this inductive reactance, XL, is much greater than, call it, the series resistance at high frequencies, call it VHF, ultra high frequencies, microwave frequencies, so this is much, much greater than RS. It could become much greater than RS. So RS is not important here, okay? So you can, maybe you can leave this a short, you can short this out. Similarly, for a capacitor, uh, XC, XC becomes much, much smaller than, call it, parallel resistance, RP, okay? Similarly, XC becomes much, much smaller than RP. So if uh, you are going to ignore XC and you have RP, which is uh, huge, okay? You don't even need to consider the, the shunt parallel resistance okay uh, i mean it's it's like it's like an open circuit then okay so uh, you can you can you can ignore this uh, rp and uh, rs right uh, so if uh, you you have a lossless transmission line uh, you can consider the distributed inductance and the capacitance in the shunt branch so why do we have this inductance and capacitance well the reason becomes evident if you consider this figure down so you see capacitance inductance per unit length uh, for example, uh, so for example, if you have a piece of box, okay, which has, uh, which has an inner, con inner conductor and an outer conductor, you apply uh, your supply, let's say, which is a DC source, it's going to establish uh, an electric field, okay. So there will be electric field due to the potential difference. Maybe this is okay. This is a positive terminal, or a battery connected. Here you have negative terminal. So from positive to negative, you will have radially magnetic field lines like this. Okay. There will be field lines. So this gives an idea of a parallel plate capacitor in which we are going to establish the field lines. Well, how much uh, field lines are going to radiate? It depends on the length of the wire. Isn't that right? So just DZ is is a is an incremental length of the wire. So depending on how much the length is, we have this parameter CDZ. Okay, it's not the capacitance; it's farads per meter. So this is the C is, is in farads per meter. C over here is not farads, farads per meter. Similarly, if uh, you're going to uh, apply the current, okay, so you have a series resistor over here, you're going to apply the, you have a current over here in the, in the inner conductor, then there's a return path, in the outer conductor, and again, you are going to consider this uh, small piece of length of wire, and if you recall the uh, basic, uh, this, uh, the thumb rule, if, you, if the, the thumb is going to point in the direction of the current, okay, and the fingers of the right hand height, right hand uh, are going to curl in the direction of the magnetic field, so you can find the direction of the magnetic field as those, those uh, radial lines, okay, so these are, these are, so if this is the direction of the current, then this, this, these are the directions of the uh, magnetic field lines, so the current has associated magnetic field, so because of this magnetic and electric field, you have this inductances and capacitances in a very short piece of uh, transmission line, and that's the case. This is a general transmission line, okay? It can be a quarks, it can be a parallel length of wire, it can model a microstrip line, but that's a, this is a general model, okay, that shows the distributed uh, capacitances and inductances. The difference will be, depending on the geometry, uh, depending on the geometry, you will have different uh, inductances and capacitances values in terms of the geometry of the transmission line, okay? But uh, this model is, is a general, okay? It models, it's a ladder network for uh, infinitesimally 
small uh, LC sections or small transmission lines. So, um, so you have the capacitance, and then this is also in Henry's per meter. Okay, and how much the thing is how much uh, magnetic field uh, lines are there? It depends on the length. So this is again LDZ. Okay, and this has to do with the the magnetic field. This is the current because the current is in series and it's uh, it establishes the magnetic field that's why you are uh, going to have the distributed inductance okay and capacitance is going to establish the electric field so you will have a shunt capacitances and that, that's how you build up this ladder network so if you consider the above figure which shows electric field lines the length of a box cable where it voltage source the field lines are radial and their number is obviously proportional to the length of the cable okay uh, so this capacitance per unit length is a constant. So the capacitance per unit length is a constant. Uh, it's, 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 it's in farads per meter. Likewise, the current through the cable in B, in B, uh, sets up a magnetic field. So another characteristic of the cable is the inductance per unit length. Okay, and how much these, uh, their number, how much the, how much we have. The electric field lines and the magnetic field lines well obviously it's important to the length of the cable that's why we are considering the per unit length quantities inductance and capacitance per unit length Henry per meters and parts per meter so we will follow the common convention and use the symbols lc to denote the capacitance and inductances but mind that this is in per unit length okay so still this is parts per meter this is Henry's per meter so that convention is obvious when the capacitor inductors are labeled uh, respectively C delta Z, L delta Z, delta Z is a short incremental length along Z axis parallel to the cable. So every increment of the transmission line contributes to the series inductance and shunt capacitance, okay, in the ladder network. So which models the real transmission line in the limit the delta Z goes to zero. So if you're going to add more and more sections, of course you're increasing the length of the transmission line. So if you're going to add more sections to it, you're increasing the length of the line. Okay. Uh, now, for some situations, for example, baseband telephony or digital data transmission to long cables, the model uh, must also include the series and shunt resistance. So, as I explained earlier, uh, you see at very high frequencies, the inductive reactance is large, so you don't need to consider the series resistance. Similarly, the shunt reactance is much smaller than the parallel resistance. So, if the parallel resistance uh, looks like infinitely large to compare to XC, well, this is an open circuit, okay? So you, 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 you can ignore RP and RS over here. So at radio frequencies, however, the series reactance or the inductance, series reactance due to the inductance is much greater than the series resistance, and the shunt reactance is usually much less smaller than the shunt resistance, so both resistance can be neglected, okay? So what we are considering over here is a lossless piece of a transmission line. There is no resistance, there is no loss. Uh, so... Over here, okay, we, what, what we are going to do is we are going to see that how we can derive the relation of characteristic um, impedance of the transmission line Z0 in terms of uh, LC uh, distributed elements, which are per unit length quantities, and this is going to come out to be equal to under root of uh, L by C, okay, because we are not considering any resistances or shunt conductances, okay, so you, you don't see any resistances over here. So, so this is in general true for any piece of a transmission line. Uh, L and C can vary depending on the uh, geometry of the transmission line, but in general, the, this is the characteristic impedance or the natural impedance. Uh, but uh, you must remember this characteristic impedance is true if you're considering, uh, um, if you're measuring this uh, for an infinitely long line, okay, or if this is terminated into its own impedance okay so so if you are going so for example if you are going to add another section which has the same characteristic impedance it must leave z naught unchanged so what it means is that if you're going to measure this over here at this point and this is your input so v plus delta v this is your new section okay so for example this is your new section this is your new section that is added to l delta z and c delta z okay so the we have this delta i and delta v. So I mean, at this point, if we are going to take the ratios of voltage to current, okay, at this point in space, not in time, in space, then i plus delta i 
it should be equal to what? Okay. Uh, you see, if you can guess this, uh, this is still equal to Z0. Why? Because this is the same piece of the transmission line we are adding to it. It has the same characteristic impedance as the line we had before. So, Z0 is still equal to V by I. Okay. So, adding this piece of transmission line does not alter the uh, characteristic impedance nor it um, it uh, excites any reflections at the interface. This is your interface. So, it's still V by I. You can say V by I and V plus delta I is still the characteristic impedance, Z naught, the transmission line. So, to see that how this comes about as square root of LC, let's consider the circuit shown above where we have added another infinitesimally small LC section to model the transmission line. So, which is either infinitely long, so either you can you can have this very long section or like this we have terminated with the resistance equal to the characteristic impedance, so it appears infinitely long. Still, you don't have any reflection, so either it is infinitely long or you have the same section um, which has the same characteristic impedance, so at any point V plus delta I, I plus delta I is, is still the natural impedance, Z0, provided that there is no, 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 no reflection, okay? Now, after adding the section, the line is still infinitely long. The impedance looking into it must be Z0, okay, which is the case over here. It is still at the input, at the input you look at here, still Z0. So, if the voltage and the current at the input of the line were uh, V and I, they will be modified to become uh, V plus delta V, I plus delta I at the input of the new section. But uh, this, does, this does not mean implies an increase in power, okay, V plus delta V, I plus delta I are merely phase shifted versions of V and I. So don't don't think that V plus delta V and multiply by I plus delta is going to increase the power. It's a different power over here. It's just it's just a phase different because we have we have the phase variations. The wavelength is very small, and we have the phase variation. That's why we are considering the distributed elements C and L and C and L. So these are distributed elements, okay? So well, once again, we have this V plus delta V, I plus delta I, V over I as Z naught, from which it follows that V over I or delta V or delta I is Z naught. Now, using this and substituting delta I, you see over here, this current delta I, which flows through the front branch, is uh, if, if you consider this is the voltage V, then delta I, you can write this as uh, I C delta Z. That's farads. Okay, so farads per meter into farads C delta V into D V by DT. Okay, that's D V by DT. Similarly, if you see the potential difference at this point and this point, the potential difference is delta V. Okay, the potential difference is delta V. So delta V is what? This is equal to L di by dt and that is equal to the inductance L L delta z that that makes it Henry's okay L delta z then we have d by dt the differential of the current through the series branch and that current is uh, in the new section that is i plus delta i okay I just so these are the two equations you need to consider. So you see over here, you have this, uh, what I've written before, delta I is C, delta Z, dv by dt, and similarly delta V is, uh, it depends on the, the rate of change, change of the current through the series inductor distributed element inductance. Uh, so ignoring the vanishingly small delta Z, delta I term, we have since Z naught, we are comparing Z naught, Z naught is still delta V by delta I, same characteristic impedance, just the phase difference. So, um, delta V over here, you substitute this expression over here. And frequency domain, this uh, is J mega, D by DT is J mega, so this is D by DT. Similarly, this D by DT over here is J mega. So, this thing, these things cancelled out for delta I is C delta Z, J mega V. And this goes out as well. So, what we are left with is I by Z which is Z0 inverse, okay? So if you're going to take this to the left-hand side, you can see that 
g naught is L C square root. So g naught square or g naught square is L C, and that's for the lossless piece of a short piece of a transmission line, which is infinitely long or it is terminated in its own characteristic impedance. So there's no reflections. So that's the natural impedance or the characteristic impedance of the line. So L and C bind that these are again uh, the distributed uh, line elements having units in Henry's per meter. This is farads per meter. So Henry by farad, if you convert this out, still ohms. Okay. So, so note that you can verify that uh, because delta V and delta I are small. And the above equations are the same if the network starts with a capacitor instead of an inductor. So, yeah, I mean, you can uh, you can see this if uh, you have a, a network like this, uh, you have a capacitor because the length is small and it starts with a uh, capacitor rather than inductor. And then the story continues like this. Then again, there is a capacitor, inductor, okay. So, I mean, this this is again an alternate like this. Uh, alternative, the, 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 the characteristic impedance, Z0, will still be equal to square root of LC. Okay, you can work this out. Even if this starts with a, the shunt branch, even if you're going to start the shunt branch, shunt branch, you, you, you and you, you can show this, that Z0 is still equal to uh, L by C square root, okay? Uh, to evaluate Z0, it is sufficient to know either the inductor or capacitance, the distributed inductance and capacitance of the, of the per unit uh, line, since it follows from the electrodynamics that uh, they are related by the speed of light that is going to be, that is, that's how, I mean, since the radio propagation is at the speed of light, so if you recall from your uh, electrodynamics or microwave engineering course, this C square is there is a velocity factor of permittivity dielectric ER divided by LC, and uh, well, if the if it's vacuum, then this is one, so C is square root of LC, and that that is a constant which is uh, three into ten to the power eight meters per second. So here ER is the dielectric constant relative to vacuum, and C is the speed of light. So it depends on what L and C is. Uh, this is all, always is going to give you speed of light given the permittivity is uh, if you're considering this to be vacuum okay. but <coughs> if it's not vacuum it is filled with, with a certain dielectric medium uh, like silica or whatever it is then uh, then uh, the, the, the speed of light is going to be low okay it's, it's going to be different so the relationship between LNC holds for any two conductor any two conductor structures with a translational symmetry okay such as unlikely, such as an unlikely transmission line consisting of a square inner conductor inside a triangular outer conductor. So, for example, if you if like what you have considered before was a was a quark, okay. So it can have a certain uh, inner radius, okay. Let's call this inner radius B, and then you have an outer radius, call it whatever it is B, okay. So this symmetry continues. This symmetry continues over the length of the line, and this is a piece of uh, of a box, uh, which you might have used many times in your uh, circuit laboratories uh, with oscilloscopes, etc., to measure, to make some measurements, RF measurements. Um, so, if you have this symmetry, then you can determine for any between any two conductors uh, the, the the relation between L and C. So, for example, for a quark transmission line. The C is given in terms of the geometrical parameters of uh, the transmission line and it, it is filled with any dielectric medium. It's given by the permittivity ER, relative permittivity, the natural log of, uh, never divided by the natural log of V over A, and that's still, notice that this is still in farads per meter. So C is still farads per meter. So where, um, where A and B are the inner and outer radii, E0 is the permittivity of the space that is equal to 4 pi 10 to the minus 7. Using this uh, together with the relation that LC, the same relation that LC is equal to permittivity over C square, it gives us Z0 as ER minus 1 over 2, 60 ln B over A. So note that Z0 over here 
depends on the ratio on the geometric on the geometrical parameters of the quarks of the transmission line it does not depend on the size of the cable the size of the quarks size of the coaxial cable so it depends on the geometrical parameters so for each transmission line <coughs> if you are going to consider z naught if you are going to model the transmission line by the uh, this ladder network by the ladder network that we have seen before okay doesn't matter if you're going to start with a shunt capacitance or inductor you can change interchange that uh, distributed elements along the line but uh, <coughs> you're going to end up uh, for an infinitely long line where there is no reflection z naught is still equal to square root of l by c and this l by c for a lossless piece of a transmission line is uh, uh, is different because of the geometry okay so for example over here the z naught is this is not depending on the length it depends on the geometrical parameters that uh, you are going to so for a parallel plate capacitor it's different for a coaxial uh, cable it's given as uh, it's given by this relationship which is in terms of b and a in an outer conductor radiuses so uh, so you see this capacitance and inductance if you are going to consider the electrodynamics of uh, i mean if uh, how the electrical and magnetic fields are propagating if it is propagating in uh, transverse electromagnetic modes or if uh, you see for a tem propagation you need uh, at least two conductors so uh, if it is t or tm mode so what are the uh, 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 translational uh, electric and magnetic components if you are going to evaluate the inductance and capacitance from those uh, electromagnetic theories uh you can find the characteristic impedance in terms of the geometrical parameters of the line okay so it depends on the geometry it depends on the line uh how you are going to evaluate the characteristic impedance but uh, again it's it's independent of the size of the cable okay so it depends on the geometry it depends on the geometry of the particular line that you are uh, using